Good evening. Um, my name is David Michael. I am a science teacher here at Red Bluff High School, and I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to a presentation of discovery of findings by some students that we have at Red Bluff High School. We have some a class here. It's a we call it a NASA class where our students are interns who are working with NASA scientists studying um, much of what's going on up at Lassen Volcanic Nas National Park. And so it's a partnership between our high school, our students, and then NASA's AIM Research Center and three particular special scientists down there, as well as Lassen Volcanic National Park and some of the park rangers that are up there. The uh, research that our students do encompasses a wide range of things. Um, it's kind of modeled after the study of astrobiology, which may be a little bit fuzzy to you in terms of meaning right now, but it's something you're going to learn about as the night goes on. And these students have a great opportunity in this program to not only work with NASA scientists, but more specifically, they're able to learn from these scientists and do a lot of the skills that they learn in the classroom here at Red Bluff, actually in the field up at Lassen Park under the guidance of these scientists. And so because of that, it's a really unique opportunity that these students really um, gain a lot from. And so because of this, we are extremely excited to have the opportunity for this program and um, just learn more and more from it every single year. And our students just uh, value it tremendously. And so with, with all this being said, what we're hoping to do tonight is to share with you a little bit of what we discovered this year. And so you're going to hear from the students at some point. Um, here a little in a little bit, they put together a presentation of all the hard work that they did. Um, and you're also going to hear from the scientists and and a very special Lassen Park Ranger as well. So I'd like to introduce her first. And so this is Ranger Rossi Avila, Avila, and she is going to um, introduce you a little bit to what she does with La um, with Lassen Volcanic National Park and how this partnership kind of works from her end. Okay, thank you. Sure, I hit my unmute button. And uh, yes, I am uh, Gracia Avila, Graciela Avila in the emails, um, if you see that name. And I am really excited to be here tonight. And um, I am new to my position as of a few months at Lassen Volcanic National Park. I am the education specialist here. I apologize for my cat. She loves to jump in as soon as I start talking on a Zoom meeting. Um, you might see her tail over here. And so I was an education specialist at Grand Canyon National Park for 10 years, uh, left that type of position, went to Yellowstone for four years, and now I'm back in education at Lassen. Super excited. I love being back at Lassen. And I all I know, most of what I know about microbiology is actually from Yellowstone. Some people call Lassen Volcanic a little Yellowstone. And I've been really surprised at the similarities in the microbiology. Again, not a biologist, so my surface level knowledge of that. And <clears throat> um, it's just really, this is an ideal position. This is such a great program. It's like, I learned all this at Yellowstone, but I didn't see the connection with education and I saw the possibilities. So here we are. These students are amazing. I got to meet them just one time, hopefully more in the next few years, but um, got to go to the NASA Ames Research Center and and just kind of see the end product of where their, where their um, field collection goes into the laboratories. And um, just the contribution is amazing. I've learned just very skim knowledge of how much this kind of research can further medicine and um, uh, studies of space and backwards to what what kind of life started on Earth and how. Um, so that's just been an amazing process to see. And I hope that the students know that even, you know, this this kind of study is um, it's so important for the world. It connects with a lot of national parks out there, but really 
for the whole world. And even if they don't end up going into microbiology, I hope some of them do, but it's just such a great opportunity to learn how science works, how the world works, how the world was formed, and where's the rest of life. So those are my thoughts. Without knowing a huge amount on this program, I'm super privileged for being a part of all of it. And thank you also from the superintendent of Lassen Volcanic. He is a big supporter of this program. He is so excited to, to keep this partnership going. Thank you, Ranger Avila. Um, next up, we're going to hear from Dr. Dave Damaray. He is really the, the guiding light of this program. He is he's kind of taken on the leadership role of it. Um, he is one of three NASA scientists that works really, really closely with our students here at Red Bluff High School. And um, as, a, as a lead space scientist with NASA's Ames Research Center, um, his contributions to our understanding of space as well as here earth is remarkable and so he's going to just say a few words um a little bit of trying to connect mars exploration um our research up at lassen park and then life in general so dr damaray thanks uh mr michael uh and i should follow grace's lead and talk a little bit about my background i had an undergraduate degree in chemistry and then got into geology and grad school and geochemistry and then later on got into microbiology so I've been sort of touring through the disciplines and in a way that was turned out to be nicely suited to pursue a career in astrobiology. Uh, so, and I just retired actually last year after 46 years with NASA, uh, seeing a lot of stuff over the years. And of course, most excitingly, uh, Mars exploration that really took off in the nineties. So anyway, uh, I just thought I'd address a few of the connections between this class and, uh, you know, astrobiology as NASA pursues it. Of course, Sort of from a historical point of view, our missions to space are just the latest chapter in a long history of human exploration. And uh, when several famous explorers entered, you know, ventured into these unexplored regions, their teams had experts in several disciplines, cartography, geology, biology, climate, and climatology, which sort of today we call atmospheric science. Uh, and so as it searches for life beyond Earth, NASA's astrobiology program uh, must also include several disciplines to identify places that were the most favorable for life. There's a lot of a lot of space out there, and there's just only a few places, perhaps, that are most favorable for life, and therefore give us our best chance of finding it. Uh, to do this, we must understand critical relationships between life and its environment. And of course, you can see how there's applications of that to many big challenges on the Earth. And the scientific method is really the most effective strategy for understanding these kinds of relationships. And the bottom line is that the students in this class pursued a year long project that strongly resembled astrobiology exploration. They followed a scientific approach. Uh, they made observations in a field trip to Lassen last fall. They made hypotheses to try to explain what they observed. They tested these hypotheses in several lab experiments that they performed. And they reported their findings in written reports and, of course, by an oral presentation to you all tonight. So projects such as theirs are actually really improving our strategies to search for evidence of life on Mars, where it's the most promising places to search. Uh, but this project resembles a new and critical approach to science also, namely what we call interdisciplinary research. So you have the multiple disciplines. But the big problems demand that these dis diverse disciplines require each other and work together in order to achieve progress. And you can think of several examples today and the new, new kind of civil engineering that uh, is in the world today really embodies this just in terms of applications on Earth. Anyway, this experience has taught critical thinking skills that will be valuable regardless of their career choices. And of course, their generation will continue the human exploration imperative to explore uh, the world around us and beyond. So that's pretty much a summary and I'll pass it back to Mr. Michael. Thank you, Dr. Damaray. And uh, just and next up on our evening's agenda, um, we're gonna hear from the students and they have put together a, a presentation that really summarizes, and that's the key, 
it summarizes their work. Um, as Dr. DeMarais introduced to you all, um, a lot goes into this program. From the beginning of the year till now, um, the students have been up to Lassen Park. They have discovered and observed things up there. And then they've taken their discoveries back to the classroom. And in the labs, we basically try to replicate the findings. And from this, from the experiments that they've done, they have been able to draw some conclusions and write about it. Um, at the end of it, they've compiled a, a rather large report for a high school student um, summarizing everything that they've done. Um, the reports that they've turned in this year range anywhere from 20 to 30 pages, depending on the students, and was really, really thorough and encompassing. Um, what we're trying to do tonight is to summarize that, and that's hard to do in, in one evening. It's hard to do in, in one presentation, but they've come together as a group, and they've worked together as a class here to put together a presentation that really does, I think, a pretty good job of showing exactly what they've done. And so they're gonna, we're gonna play that for you right now. Um, when we're done with it, if you do have questions, we'll be happy to, to take some time to, to answer those questions and to share with you a little bit more as far as what they found. And um, without anything further, I think we're ready for the presentation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Sheffield. I've been a part of this program for two years, and tonight I'll be your Master of Ceremonies leading you through this presentation. This presentation is the culmination of my classmates and my own research and experiments over the year. Starting the night off, we will first explain what astrobiology is, followed with an introduction to the field sites we tested and how we tested them, then the experiments we designed to test certain aspects of these field sites, and what these experiments told us about the field sites. To to conclude the presentation, we will discuss how this all relates to our questions about astrobiology. And now, to start us off, we have Evelyn Fucci, a first year in this program, introducing what is astrobiology. Astrobiology is the investigation of the origins, distribution, and future of life in the universe. A key aspect of astrobiology is to search for and characterize the full diversity of habitable environments, both on ancient Earth and on other planets. The origins of such habitable environments in the universe are attributed to the presence of life-sustaining elements in the cosmos. Volcanic activity and its interactions with water are key aspects of ancient habitable environments we have seen evidence of on ancient Earth. Evidence of such interactions has been discovered on Mars, and these interactions have also probably occurred on other Earth-like planets distributed throughout the universe. And now, Lindsay Foe discussing our interest in Lassen. Thank you, Evelyn. Lassen's environments are an analog for astrobiology research on ancient Mars. Earth and Mars shared hydrothermal and volcanic activity and habitable environments. Lassen has a remarkable variety of hydrothermal sites, one of which is Bumpus Hell. Bumpus Hell has similarities with both ancient Earth and ancient Mars. Bumpus Hell contains sources of energy and water from the solutes in hot springs and various oxidized chemical species. The park's dynamic range of conditions are able to sustain this large diversity of microbial species. A similar environment existed on ancient Earth, as it also comprised high volcanic activity, an abundance of water, and biodiversity across different environmental parameters. On Mars, there are remnants of ancient lava flows, including on Gusev Crater, faults, and hydrothermal release, all of which are responsible for modifying and creating much of present Warner Valley from bedrock to springs, indicating evidence of hydrothermal activity and therefore life on Mars. I now introduce... Tyler Peterson with Habitability. Thank you, Lindsay. Here we have a Venn diagram showing the requirements for habitability. Habitability is the sustainability of an environment for life. In the top left, we have solvents, which is typically water. In the bottom left, we have energy, typically sunlight. In the top right, we have raw materials such as carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. These are the building blocks of life. In the bottom right, we have favorable conditions such as moderate temperature and pH and relatively low salinity. In order to have a habitable environment, all four of these conditions must be present and different ranges of these conditions will still support life. Thank you, Tyler. 
After learning about the connection of astral biology to Lassen Volcanic National Park, we set out to different hydrothermal sites in which we use different meters to test these hydrothermal sites. For the explanation of these meters, we have Izzy Carbonell introducing field and lab sites. From the sites to be detailed in the following slides, the teams collected two samples of solution, microbial mass, and gravel. Along with the physical samples, the teams collected readings of temperature, pH, a measure of how acidic or alkaline a substance is, encompassing high acidity, like lemons at pH 2, to more alkaline substances, such as bleach at pH 12, with 7 indicating neutrality. And lastly, conductivity, a measure of dissolved solids, all environmental attributes crucial to the survival of organisms. The conductivity meter measured in microsiemens per centimeter, a standard unit of measurement for electrical conductivity with distilled water normally ranging from 5 tenths to 3 microsiemens per centimeter. The instruments both measured for temperature and were team specific, so readings collected weekly for each experiment were measured by a consistent meter. Thank you, Izzy. Now with these meters and probes, we set out to five different field sites across Warner Valley, which allows us in one field trip to visit a variety of conditions in pH, conductivity, and temperature. Upon entering Warner Valley, first year and second year interns were broken up evenly and set out to record not only data findings, but the physical characteristics of each field site. These distinctly different field sites are mainstream, including mainstream below Paddle Wheel Creek and mainstream below Devil's Kitchen, alkaline spring, Paddle Wheel Creek, and Devil's Kitchen. To start your introduction to these field sites, we have Bella introducing Paddle Wheel Creek. Thanks, John. As we walked up to the Paddle Wheel Creek site, we saw a stream that originated from a spring on the mountain, not too far away from where we were. In terms of life, we saw that there was a variety of vegetation in and around the stream, as well as possible algae within the stream. It had a pretty neutral pH of 7.6, a low conductivity of 83 microsiemen, and a temperature of 14 degrees Celsius, or 58.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Basically, this water has less dissolved solids in it than most well water, suggesting no volcanic interaction. Now Sam will be telling you about mainstream. Main stream is not unlike any other ordinary mountain stream. The samples we took were from the crystal clear water from said location. This stream was fairly shallow with a depth ranging from around one to three feet deep, differing on location. The conductivity was reasonably low with it being 140 microsiemens and a fairly neutral pH of 7.2 as a detective. The temperature measured around 14 degrees Celsius. It is surrounded by an abundance of leafy green vegetation that grows in and around the stream with animal life being prevalent. Based on these numbers and observations, we can infer that there is little to no evidence of volcanic activity in the stream, just as Panel Wheel Creek. Now Mickey is going to introduce Devil's Kitchen. Thank you, Sam. And now Devil's Kitchen. Right away, you can tell Devil's Kitchen is different from all the other sites. There was no vegetation within the immediate vicinity of this site. The air had a pungent smell of hydrogen sulfide, which has a distinguishable rotten egg smell. We sampled from a very shallow stream that eventually ran into mainstream. The stream had a cloudy white color. The pH was 2.0, which is extremely low. The temperature was 52 degrees Celsius, and the conductivity was 5,760 microsiemens, which is well over all the other sites. The site had many jagged rocks, and it is clear that they had been degrade degraded over time due to the extreme acidity of the water. The hot and acidic water were clear indicators that there is volcanic activity present at this site. We noticed brown and green spots and filaments that could be microbes. And now I'm going to hand it to Sabian Hamilton, who is going to talk about the alkaline spring. Thank you, Mickey. Lassen Volcanic National Park is an amazing example of hydrothermal activity and microbial life. Alkaline streams vents lay on a fault line as there is a sharp difference in height. There is steam rising from the water itself because it has hydrothermal features. There were dead bugs and animals caught trying to cross the stream, and along the side of the stream there were smooth rocks coated in a layer of white minerals. Plant diversity around the perimeter of the stream can grow very well, however, the plants exposed to the water directly die. 
It is easily noticeable that there is an abundance of microbes submerged in the water at Alkaline Stream more than any other field site. Thank you, Sabian. From these different field sites, we took our recorded data and samples back to the lab to test parameters we set up that mimics the distinctly different environments found in each Warner Valley field site. Our first experiment, which began in November, was the introduction of rock powder to different solutions. In the creation of this experiment, we set up five different flasks, which varied based on pH and temperature, and took weekly recordings testing how these variables affect the conductivity of each solution. Introducing these rock dissolution parameters will be Jordan Brandt. As John has just mentioned, we've conducted a series of experiments with the aim of better understanding the effects of different parameters on rock dissolution in Warner Valley. In order to do so, we devised a set of hypotheses as a class, which we then tested across five different parameters. The first experiment involved using daysite rock powder and was conducted at pH 2 and 50 degrees Celsius. The remaining four experiments were conducted with basalt rock at both 25 and 50 degrees Celsius and at pH 2 and pH 5. We deliberately selected these pH levels and temperatures to closely mimic the field sites, with pH 2 being similar to that of Devil's Kitchen and pH 5 reflecting the natural pH of rainfall. We believe that these experiments have yielded valuable insights into the complex mechanisms behind rock dissolution, and we look forward to sharing our findings with you all. I will now dive deeper into the impact that water-rock reactions have on the pH of a solution. One of the hypotheses we tested during our experiments was whether aqueous solutions interacting with rocks would lead to an increase in the pH of the solution over time. We found this hypothesis to be true through weekly pH measurements and the need for additional acid to be added. In fact, regardless of the experimental conditions, the pH of all solutions rose every week, as evidenced by the bar graph before you. The bars in the graph represent the total amount of acid that was added to each experiment to keep the pH levels stable throughout the testing period. This need for continual acid addition is the result of water-rock reactions, in which the cations in the dissolved rock contribute to the rise in pH of the solution. Had we not titrated weekly, the final pH levels would have been significantly higher than the starting levels. Moving on, I'm pleased to introduce Gage Lawrence, who will be speaking on the effects that pH and temperature have on the speed of rock dissolution. Thank you, Jordan. In our rock dissolution experiment, we explored two of the main factors in how fast rocks dissolve in aqueous solutions, pH and temperature. These factors were chosen based on two hypotheses, one that temperature dissolve rocks faster and the other that more acidic pH dissolve rocks faster. How to show the effect of pH and temperature is through net conductivity, which measures the amount of ions in a solution not accounting hydrogen ions from the pH to better measure the effect of pH because it limits pH's effect on conductivity. The temperatures were set at 50 degrees and 25 degrees Celsius so that we can measure the difference in how fast the rocks dissolve in different temperatures. As you can see on the graph, the 50 degree experiment had a much higher net conductivity at the end of the experiment compared to the 25 degree experiment by 189 microsiemens, showing that a higher temperature dissolved rocks at a higher rate than a lower temperature. The second factor that we explored was the effect of pH. The pH was set at 2 and the other at 5, so we can measure the effect of pH on how fast rocks dissolve. As you can see on the graph, the experiment with a pH of 2, the rocks dissolved much faster, having a net conductivity that is 2,002 microsiemens more than the experiment with a pH of 5. At the end of the experiment, showing the more acidic pH caused the rocks to dissolve at a higher rate than that of a more basic pH. Ultimately, our experiment shows that a more acidic the pH and the higher temperature dissolves rocks faster than a more basic pH and a lower temperature, which gives us an amazing insight into the water chemistry at the field sites. Thank you. Thank you, Gage. After testing the effects of pH and temperature on a rock powder solution, we set out to our second experiment, which was the incubation of microbe cultures. These cultures originated from the Warner Valley field sites previously introduced. The experiment began assigning each intern a column containing a small culture of microbes and for the next 10 weeks tracked growth found within the columns. During this period, we were asked to create an experimental column and change one variable, being either temperature, pH, total dissolved solids, or light. With this, I'd like to introduce Evelyn Fucci, explaining the effects of temperature change on microbe incubations. 
The first condition that we chose to study was the importance of temperature found at the field sites in order to determine if the microbes are temperature dependent. Temperature is one of the most important factors that can affect the growth and survival of microbes due to the fact that it influences metabolic processes and the fact that it varies site to site. In this example, we lowered the temperature of the hair-like filament since it comes from a higher temperature field site. The temperature was lowered from 45 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. Our hypothesis was that the hair-like filament would not be able to tolerate the drop in temperature. Over the course of 10 weeks, we observed the filament's progression, giving it fresh sight water to feed it every four weeks. As time went on, the microbe yellowed, showing its decrease in growth throughout this time, whereas the control, kept at warmer conditions similar to where it was found, thrived. Experiments with different microbes testing the same variable yielded similar results, proving that the microbes are in fact temperature dependent and that their ideal growth occurs at temperatures near where they were found. And now, Ethan Lugo discussing the effects of pH. Now, in this experiment, we investigated the effects of pH on microbial growth. Microbes are sensitive to changes in their environment, and pH is one of the key factors that can influence their growth and survival. By altering the pH of the growth medium and making temperature a constant, we can observe changes in microbial growth and determine how pH affects their development. The pictures shown are a concise representation of what happened in the microbes when changed from a pH of 7 to a pH of 5. As you can see in the pictures on the left, the microbes grew normally or as they would with no effect due to the fact that this is the control of the experiment. Although the discrepancies between the pictures of the experiment at the beginning and end are subtle, with careful observation you can see that the microbes have changed and are dying due to the yellowish color along the side with its stunted growth from the beginning. This is evidence that the microorganisms struggle to grow because of the change in pH due to the findings of this experiment, along with another experiment of similar caliper that has generally the same findings. Up next, we Sam Cornelius with Solute Experiments. Thank you, Ethan. The next condition we chose to investigate was the addition of solutes. Microbes can be sensitive, and solutes are an important factor in their growth and survival. In this experiment, 300 microliters of sodium theosulfate was added to the water from Paddleville Creek and kept at room temperature for approximately 10 weeks. As the weeks progressed, a large green mass formed in the experimental, while nothing major happened in the control. The mass appeared to be two small moss balls, surrounded by a thin blanket of algae resembling that of a spider web. Overall, the control was alive at the end of the 10 weeks, but did not show nearly the amount of growth as the experimental did. From this, we can conclude that the microbes can withstand the addition of this solute. Up next will be Joey Simonis with Microlites. Thank you, Sam. The last condition we experimented with was light. The reason we chose to explore this was because we observed what seemed to be non-phototrophic microbes at Devil's Kitchen. Because they weren't green, we assumed the source of energy was something other than light. In this experiment, using iron-eating microbes from Devil's Kitchen, we tried to completely remove light except when checking the microbes, adding 200 microliters of iron to chloride at a dilution ratio of one part iron to chloride to 100 parts water every week to feed them. Over the time of the experiment, we witnessed no visible growth and a loss of a faint green hue unlike the control, which grew more and more green over time. And now, John. Thank you, Joey. With observations taken from the Werner Valley field sites and the last two experiments, which have given us physical data on how rocks and microbes are reacting in these simulated environments, we were tasked to compile this information to create our interpretation of how can an area spanning a couple of miles have such vastly different environments and what is the geological process that affects each site. To answer this question, I'd like to introduce Aubrey Norton covering Paddlewheel Creek's interpretation. Thank you, John. Evidence of volcanic activity appears in three forms, temperature, pH, and sulfate levels. Since Paddle Creek has a neutral pH, has a low temperature along with low sulfate levels, it indicates a lack of hydrothermal activity at the site. Paddle Creek gets its water from snowmelt and rainfall that travels through the valley. The pH of this water is around 5, while the creek has a pH of around 7.6. This can be explained by the rock dissolution experiments where we are able to prove that pH increases over time as rock is dissolved into the water. 
Through Theroctic solution experiments, we were also able to determine that environments with a more neutral pH and cooler temperature do dissolve rock, but at a much lower rate. This will explain the low conductivity and why the pH is not acidic due to the small amount of solids dissolved. The microbes at Petawell Creek mostly consist of green algae that are able to survive and grow due to the benign conditions that they live in. In the biology experiments previously discussed, we were able to show that environments with neutral pHs and cooler temperatures are able to offer a more steady growth to a variety of microbes. Now, Mauricio Tamayo will explain the Devil's Kitchen site. Thank you, Aubrey. The Devil's Kitchen site showed prominent evidence of Lassen's magma chamber deep underground that released its volcanic gases along a fault line and boiling mud pots. Compared to other field sites, a small stream in Devil's Kitchen had the highest sulfate levels at 21 millimoles, the lowest pH of 2 comparable to lemon juice or vinegar, high temperatures reaching 52 degrees Celsius or 125 degrees Fahrenheit, and high dissolved solids concentrations as indicated by the high conductivity of 5,760 microsiemens. We replicated this environment in our rock dissolution experiments using hot plates and sulfuric acid to lower the pH. These experimental conditions increase the dissolution of rocks, increasing the conductivity of the solutions and the dissolved solids concentrations. Our experiments showed that both a low pH and high temperature can greatly increase the conductivity of solutions, making values similar to our measurements at Devil's Kitchen. In our laboratory incubation experiments, with low pH and high temperature, the microbes had less growth and diversity compared to other experiments with field sites that had more moderate conditions. This, along with the low pH and high temperatures at Devil's Kitchen, led to lower abundances of microbes. Next up, Mia Gleason will now interpret Mainstream at Paddlewheel Creek. Thank you, Mauricio. Mainstream below Paddlewheel Creek has similar conditions to the Paddlewheel Creek site due to their closeness. The stream water is a blend of the acidic Devil's Kitchen water and the fresh Paddlewheel Creek water. Since there is no hydrothermal activity near the site, mainstream below Paddlewheel Creek has a low conductivity and sulfate input. But there's a small amount of runoff from Devil's Kitchen, making the conductivity higher than what is found at Paddlewheel Creek. The site's pH and conductivity is explained through the rock dissolution experiments. It was found that as rock dissolves into the water, the pH and conductivity will increase. At mainstream, it can be assumed that the pH is neutral because the rocks within it have had time to dissolve into the stream. The water's cool temperature also contributed to the rocks dissolving at a slow rate. Our biology incubations done in class indicated that the mainstream below Paddlewheel Creek site has a high amount of microbial diversity and abundance, and that a change in the temperature and pH decreases both abundance and diversity. And now, Mauricio Tamayo We'll return to discuss the alkaline stream site. Thank you, Mia. As shown from our observations, alkaline stream is a small stream flowing by a hill with a large abundance of dark green algae at the bottom with a small steam vent rising, reaching temperatures of 57 degrees Celsius or 135 degrees Fahrenheit, along with the second highest sulfate abundance at 1,947 micromoles, showing evidence of hydrothermal vents. Although, Unlike Devil's Kitchen, the alkaline stream doesn't follow its high conductivity and low pH. Rather, it has a neutral pH of 7.1, along with a high conductivity of 640 microsiemens. Other solutes at Devil's Kitchen are also prevalent at alkaline stream. The presence of sulfate indicates that sulfuric acid existed underground. This, along with the high temperatures, would have increased the solubility of substances and the dissolution in the site which caused the pH to increase as it had more time to interact with the rock as our lab experiments showed. With the neutral pH and high temperature, the green filament microbes had a consistent and healthy amount of growth in the field and in our lab incubations. But our lab observations also showed that these microbes did not tolerate different conditions, perhaps explaining why they were not seen in other field sites. Thank you, Mauricio. From our first days in this program, we were given crumbs to a complete answer of how this all relates to Mars past. With the data we've collected from labs as well as observations and interpretations we've made down at Warner Valley, we believe we can better answer this final question. 
To wrap our findings together, it's my pleasure to introduce Evelyn Groom presenting Significance of Study. Recent evidence from the Spirit Rover revealed the presence of hydrothermal features on ancient Mars. By finding environments on Earth that share characteristics with ancient Mars and can harbor life, such as Warner Valley and Alaskan Volcanic National Park, we can investigate the possibility of life on ancient Mars and the conditions under which it may have lived. As more evidence from Earth and Mars is presented, we can apply our findings from this program to guide the search. All right, ladies and gentlemen, to finish off the night, each student has prepared a short sentence or two discussing how this program has impacted them. And to start us off will be none other than myself. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Deciding on one impact was tough. There are countless things you can talk about that this program has provided me, from hands-on learning experiences to lessons I can take off to college. But, you know, after many hours editing this video that you guys have been watching, it finally hit me. Handling criticism. Now, to give you some sort of, like, understanding to what I'm talking about, I have something to show you. All right, now what I have in my hand here is 20 pages representing the 14 through 20 pages long our each student's NASA report was. This report was not something you waited till the last minute. This was a cumulative of an entire year. And I can tell you firsthand, each student worked really hard on this. This, along with the experiment and the presentation itself, each student put a ton of time in this. And I can tell you, there were criticisms made along the way. Now, this isn't a bad thing. Criticism is normal, but I don't think there's any other class that will get you as used to it as this class does. This is a class where you have to be able to take criticism or else you won't make it at all. And I really think that is something you cannot find in juniors and seniors, not only in our campus, but in campuses around. My name is Marissa Tamayo Perez, and I've been part of an astrobiology program here at the high school for two years. When I first joined, I didn't know what astrobiology was. But over time, with the help of other interns and as a scientist, they helped me have a better understanding. I joined the program because I enjoy learning about science, particularly about space, as there's always something new to learn about. And by having the opportunity to be part of the program, it opened new doors for me after high school. And I'd like to thank the NASA scientists who helped us throughout the year and Mr. Michael as well. My name is Amory Norton, and this has been my second year in this program. I have loved my time in this internship because of my love for science and my love for learning. The ability to work with and learn from NASA scientists is a phenomenal and completely unique opportunity to Rebel High School. It has been a huge impact in preparing me for my studies after high school and in becoming a more well-rounded student. For these reasons, I am incredibly grateful for the effort put forth by the NASA scientists, the Lassen Volcanic National Park Rangers, and Mr. Michael for making this program possible. Second year intern. This program has given me both research experience and mentorship experience, which I think that I could apply towards my educational journey and which I could apply towards my professional journey towards a um, job in STEM. My name is Mia Gleason and I'm a second year intern. From the NASA internship, I learned a lot of valuable knowledge about Lassen Volcanic National Park. Without this internship, I would not have known how unique the features are within a local national park. I would like to start by thanking everyone who made this program possible. It was a fantastic experience about how microbes and their environment interact. I think my favorite experience was our field trip down to Ames Research Facility, especially the supercomputer. Hi, my name is Ethan Lugo, and I'm really interested in the future of space exploration and with the connections between Lassen Volcanic National Park and Mars, this class has allowed me to expand my knowledge on the subject. Thanks to all of the scientists, including Mr. Michael, I have grown my passion for space and will continue to do so. Thank you. Hey, it's Mickey. Thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to learn and experience real field work. Thank you for putting in the work and putting in the hours to give us an educational yet enjoyable time. There isn't a single person among us that hasn't been benefited from this class. I think my favorite part of this year uh, was being able to go to the Ames Research Center and seeing all of the cool things over there, like the wind tunnel specifically. Uh, yeah. I had 
scientific interest for a while, but I wasn't sure where to start. With NASA, I was able to explore topics that I was already familiar with, as well as new ones from geology to hydrology to microbiology and beyond. I especially enjoyed the chance to try something out of my comfort zone as I had never participated in scientific research or any internships beforehand. The impact that the NASA internship program had on me was all around a great experience and I had an amazing time learning how to use field equipment and having a better way to bond with friends than a normal class. I, my, my favorite part of the class was the Ames Research Center field trip. Thank you. Um, so I, I learned a lot from this class. I didn't, I didn't have hardly any experience with most of the things we did, except for in chemistry. <laughs> so um, I did learn a lot. But one thing that I think is a takeaway that I wasn't expecting was learning just how connected everything is and how essential that is for life. So, yeah. Hi, my name's Izzy, and before entering this program, I had very little experience of scientific instruments and a limited experience with scientific procedures. I enjoyed seeing the progress of not only my experiment, but of my fellow interns' experiments as well, and I am excited at the prospect of applying my new skills in future personal and professional projects. I would like to thank Scientist Desmara, Scientist Kubo, Scientist Parento and Mr. Michael, as well as Scientist Cook and Scientist Mayor and many others for making this program possible. Hi, my name is Samantha Cornelius. I'm extremely appreciative of the, all of the opportunities that the NASA program has given me and all of the people involved. I appreciate the diverse range of topics we've covered this year, my favorites being aeronautics and astrobiology. Hey guys, it's Evelyn. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody involved in these programs that allowed us to do this. It was so much fun being with all of you guys and learning from all of you guys. And I just wanted to say that it really helped me solidify my interest in science as a future career. I just want to say thank you to everyone involved. I've had an amazing time throughout the entire class and it's been a great opportunity to see our researchers in STEM, what they really do and really an insight into what my career might look like in the future, which you don't get to see anywhere else in high school. So I really want to say thank you for everyone that made that possible. I am immensely grateful for the opportunity to participate in this NASA program. Collecting samples from various field sites alongside my classmates was a truly remarkable experience. The skills and knowledge that I gained through this program will continue to inspire me in my future pursuits in science and beyond. I cannot thank the organizers of this program enough for this amazing opportunity. Thank you, Jordan. And once again, I'd really love to thank both Dave, Nikki, Mike, and Mr. Michael for making this program possible. I think that is it. I have an abrupt ending there, I realize, but um, I, I think that's the end of it. And we just kind of had to throw in those, just make sure that you're all paying attention, make sure that you uh, realize that these are still high school students. And from time to time, we all tend to make mistakes. Um, and something happened there with some of the audio. I don't really know what it was, but um, obviously, unfortunately, we couldn't hear from everybody there at the end. Um, but with that being said, um, what you just saw there was, <clears throat> excuse me, was really a summary of the hard work that was done during the course of the year. And also you heard from the students just what impact this program had on them. Um, at this point, I think what I'd like to do is just kind of open it up to questions. I don't know if there are any in, in the chat or not. So um, I'm just going to allow i think mike to kind of filter through this and if there are any questions um, we'll see if we can address those and go from there um i think in the meantime what we'll do is um because there are no questions we're going to recognize the students for all their hard work and so mike um kubo is going to um, present the students with some certificates and just kind of acknowledge all the hard work that they've done throughout the course of the year Mike. 
Thanks, uh, Mr. Michael. I appreciate that. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Mike Kubo. I'm a researcher at NASA Ames Research Center uh, with uh, Dr. Nimre and Dr. Peranto. And uh, this is the part of the evening where we like to recognize the students by awarding them um, a certificate that you know, a certificate of completion that shows uh, all that they have accomplished during during the, the year. And so um, because we're doing this on Zoom, as we have for the last few years, um, I'm going to start just by showing you an example of the certificate what it looks like, and then I will read off the names of all of the um, of all of the uh, the students that, that are completing the program. So first of all, um, oh, hello, thanks. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, let me unblur this, sorry. Um, it's a problem, the blurring of the background, here we go. Um, so yeah, it comes in this really beautiful um, blue envelope, and inside the, cert the certificate will look like this. And I'm going to start by sharing my screen of all the certificates. And hang on one second. Technical difficulty. There we go. There we go. Great. OK, wonderful. So um, I'm going to start by reading all. Let me skip back to the top here. Start, start by reading all the names of, um, of, the, of the students that participated. Um, and just very quickly, I, I just want to say um, how much of a pleasure this program is to help administer and, and mentor these students. Um, you now we've been doing this program now for 15 years. Uh, it's hard to believe that we have 15 um, program years under our belt. Um, and every year we are just, you know, we're always blown away by the quality of the students and the quality of their work. And, um, you know, the, the grit and determination that these students show taking on really a big project, really a college level project in a high school class. Um, and I just wanna say that, you know, say this every year, I've said this for 15 years, um, every year we are more and more blown away by the quality of the work. And this year is no exception. Um, the, the presentation that the students just gave was phenomenal. And I, I truly I truly think it's the best presentation we've seen yet. So um, thank you all so much for, um, you know, thank you to the students for your hard work and for putting on such a wonderful um, oral presentation um, for the end of the year. And um, we wish you the best of luck next year, whether you're a junior that's going to continue on at Red Bluff and hopefully in this program, or if you're a senior going on to, you know, to bigger and better things next year, um, thank you and good luck. And with that, I'll read names um, on, the, um, on the certificate. So uh, the first person we'd like to recognize is um, our, our first year student, Jordan Brandt. Jordan, thank you so much for your contributions to the program. Next, we have Mickey Cohn. Uh, Mickey, thanks so much, and I'll definitely never forget you after that uh, after that impact statement at the end there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mickey. Thanks for your contributions to the program. Uh, next, we have Sabian Hamilton. Uh, Sabian, thank you so much for your contributions to the program. We really appreciate all of your hard work. Uh, next is Gage Lawrence. Gage, thank you so much. It was, it was a nice impact statement. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and contributions to the program. Um, next up, we have Ethan Lugo. Ethan, fantastic working with you. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and, and, and what you did this year. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Bella Munoz. Bella, that was a, a very nice impact statement and great job this year. Thank you so much. And um, we wish you the best of luck. And, and thanks for all of your hard work in the program. Uh, next is Tyler Peterson. Tyler, thanks so much for all of your hard work. It was great working with you this year. Next up, we have Joey Simonis. Joey, thank you so much for your hard work and great job this year. Thank you. Um, we have Izzy Carbonell. Izzy, thank you so much. It was wonderful working with you. And thanks for all of your hard work and contributions this year. Um, next up is Samantha Cornelius. Sam, thank you so much again for all of your hard work and fantastic job. And I think last of the first year students is uh, Evelyn Frucci. Evelyn, fantastic job. Um, just outstanding, outstanding work. Thank you so much. Actually, I think we have one more, and that's Lindsay Poe. That's right. I thought I was thinking, where, where was where was Lindsay? Um, Lindsay, fantastic job. It was really fun working with you. Um, yeah, I, I hope I sure hope we get a chance to see everyone uh, up at Red Bluff before before the end of the year, or at least uh, online through the through the class. So, Lindsay, great job. Thank you so much, and and you have the distinction of, of being one of our few senior first-year students, and it was just a real pleasure having you in the class. So thank you so much, and thanks for all of your hard work. Um, next up, we will present the certificates to the second-year students. These are the students that returned after doing one year in the program. They returned as mentors, 
um, and team leads to, to help um, essentially help mentor the first year students and sort of get a new angle on um, how to be a, you know, how to, how, to, how to do science and how to be a scientist. And part of that is through mentoring and teaching and, and leading. And so um, I'd like to recognize those students next. Um, first up, we have Eve Groom. Eve, fantastic job. It's been wonderful working with you. We're really going to miss you. And best of luck next year. I, I'd love to hear where you end up going for, for college. Uh, next up, we have Aubrey Norton. Aubrey, it's been really wonderful working with you. Um, just so much, so much fun getting to see everybody, you know, all the second year students um, really, really shine and um, take on the challenge of mentorship. And you did a fantastic job. And we're really looking forward to hearing what you're doing next. Thank you for your two years of service to the program. Uh, next up, we have John Sheffield. John MC, as everyone knows. John, it was really wonderful working with you. Um, fantastic job these two years, and thanks for stepping up to do, you know, to be a leader in the class and for, for emceeing the program tonight. It was a really wonderful job. Thank you. Uh, next is Mauricio Tamayo Perez. Um, Mauricio, fantastic job, and thanks for stepping up and, and taking on a little additional um, responsibility and leadership in the class. We really appreciate all of your hard work and efforts. It's been wonderful working with you, truly, and look forward to hearing what, you, what you're doing next year. And last, we have Courtney White, who wasn't with us tonight. No, Mia Gleason. There she is. Okay. Last is Mia Gleason. Mia, thank you so much um, for all of your hard work. It was wonderful seeing you come back again this year. And I uh, really, uh, really hope to get to chat with you before you leave. And um, fantastic job. Fantastic job um, stepping up into the, into the role of a mentor and second-year student. So thank you so much for all of your hard work. Um, let me just... There we go. Okay. So uh, next up, we'd like to recognize... Um, the other folks who make this program possible, um, you know, the students always do a fantastic job. They always work super hard. Um, this program <laughs> that works harder than Mr. Dave Michael. Um, again, 15 years of partnership, Mr. Michael. Um, I know it's hard to believe. I think, um, you know, if we were to do side-by-side -side photos of you and I 15 years ago, <laughs> we might not recognize each other. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I'm joking. Uh, but truly, it's been such a pleasure working with you. And we absolutely couldn't do this without you. And we really, really value your partnership and support in, in this program. So thank you so much. And last, Grassi Avila. Thank you so much, Grassi, for joining us this year. This is Grassi's first year in the program um, as, our, as our ranger partner with Lassen Volcanic National Park. And it's been fantastic getting to know you. And um, we really appreciate your support, the park support, and we really look forward to uh, continuing this program with you um, in future years. So, Grassi, thank you so much for all of your hard work as well. And again, we couldn't do this, we couldn't have this program without you and the park, you know, your support. So, thank you, everyone. Um, it's been wonderful. With that, I'll give it back to Mr. Michael um, to see if we have any questions from the audience. Um, there have to be questions about that wonderful presentation. And, and there may be, um, before we get to questions, if there are any, I want to give some of these students a chance if they're here. I know a couple of them are, who unfortunately we couldn't hear from during during the presentation. And so um, I, don't, I don't know if Mauricio is here. Is Mauricio on? Mauricio, if you are, just say something or, or somehow indicate. Hey, what about Ethan? I don't. I have not seen Ethan. I know he had an obligation tonight, but I don't know if he's on or not. And Izzy, I think Izzy's on with us. Izzy, are you there? Is he unmuted? Um. Oh, here comes Mauricio. So Mauricio, we're going back to. And so Mauricio, if you want to do your impact statement live. I saw Izzy behind you there. So maybe you can do yours and then Izzy can jump in and, and do hers and, and then we'll let, let John go as well. And so if that works, that'd be great. Um, so I'll let you guys go. So it seems like the sound is a common theme. Maybe they're just uh, in a sound, like a sound room or something, you know, quiet room. Maybe we just are unable to hear them, or maybe they just don't want to talk to us. Okay, we have another technology source there. So I think Mauricio is ready to go. So Mauricio, 
if you want to share your impact statement, if you remember what you said or, or vaguely remember what you said, that'd be great. I hope you guys can hear me. So uh, I've been a uh, part for two years. I started my and I want to give thanks to all of you uh, who helped us out, especially there in the in the scripts throughout the presentation. I appreciate the time, especially Mr. Mike, all possible. And, and thank you to all. You, you get it. It's all and I appreciate it. That's it. Thank you, Mauricio. I know we're kind of putting you on the spot there and it's probably kind of tough to get the audio to work and everything. Um, was Izzy behind you? Does she want to jump in and, and use your, your phone there or is she, did she run away? Hi. Before entering this program, little experience of scientific instruments and limited scientific procedures. I am in the process of constructing hypotheses and testing the equipment and seeing the progress of experiment by my fellow interns well. And I am excited at the prospect of a skills in future personal and professional. Thank you, scientist Desmara, scientist Parentu, as well as scientist Cook and scientist Mayer. This program possible. Great job. Thank, thank you, Izzy. Um, and I don't think Ethan or Sam are around. Um, and I haven't seen Tyler either. So the last person that's going to go is John. Is John still there somewhere? John's right here. Oh. Okay. What up, and All so, right. Um, and so John has, sorry about those he, has a, he has an impact statement and then he's going to talk a little bit to the NASA scientists. So go ahead, John. All right. Um, so I've been two years now. And if one impact that I can say take is um, handling criticism, this is a program where you're critiqued a lot on things you hear and it's honest, want the best work out of us. And compared to any other, I think you're getting that. I know seniors who will just get angry at that. And this is a class where you cannot get mad. You close. You have to work to be better. And I don't get that anywhere else. Thank you. Uh, I was going to do the, the, okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. As a thank you to, all the hours that Dave, Nikki, and Mike have ram uh, for it to even function. We made a basket full of locally grown and businesses around Red Bluff. It's just, we want to thank you guys for putting in so much. We don't know what we really could do without this program. And we really hope you can. Thanks so much, John. That's really kind of you. We really appreciate that. Thanks. Likewise, thanks a lot. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and I realize without us all being there in person, it kind of loses a little bit of the impact, but they did um, come up with some really nice local things for you guys. And so we'll get that to you when we get a chance. Um, and thank you again for all the time for the, uh, you know, countless hours you guys put into this, all the energy you bring every single time. And um, obviously the program would not be the same without you guys. Um, in addition to the Nikki and Dave and Mike, um, there's other scientists down at AMS Research Center that helped out as well. And, and so, um, just all the, all the people, it, it takes a village and that village has definitely been helping us out for a lot of years here. And so we just couldn't be more appreciative. So thank you guys very much. And I just want to thank, uh, all you folks up at Red Bluff in return. Uh, it's just been a nice grounding experience for us. Step out of our bubble here in the Bay Area and get up there and and uh, share some of our science with you and uh, and your energy and everything. We're deeply appreciated. It's always a rewarding experience for us. Thank you. Okay, I'm. I still don't see any questions, so um, I think we're just going to kind of, I guess. 
that's it. I guess we're done. Um, unless I'm missing something. Um, is there anything else that that we were gonna do that that I'm forgetting about, or or is that the evening? I I, I think that's it. I, I did just want to take a moment, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, and I just want to thank um, Dr. David Demaray for uh, 15 years of leadership in this program um, as the as the principal investigator, the PI of this program. Um, we owe you a lot of thanks and gratitude for all of the hard work you put in over the years and your vision and leadership to make this program what it is. So Dave, from the bottom of my heart, and I know the bottom of everybody's hearts, um, thank you for 15 years. It's been a wonderful time. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, hope we can do this at least a little longer. <laughs> 15 years, uh, let's say 15 years more, hopefully. Great, and uh, just I just wanna thank you for that, Mike, and for everybody. Uh, but I want to just make another key point, and that is we're going to be asking the students for feedback on this year's course. I know they have very nice comments that we heard tonight, but, you know, down, down in the nitty gritty, how can we do a better job? And uh, and that's been the magic over these 15 years is your feedback uh, over those years and how we've used that to leverage ourselves to a better and better uh, experiences. So please uh, provide that feedback, which uh, we'll send you the information forms for that in the next day or two. And um, that, that'll just uh, really complete the circle for our annual experience. Thanks so much. Yeah, I just want to toss in, John, here's your chance to give us some feedback <laughs> <laughs> based on your impact statement. And I will just take a moment. I haven't really spoken yet. Um, as Mike pointed out, we wanted to give special thanks to Dave, who is now retired. And so he's volunteering his time for this program. Uh, so that shows his commitment and his passion for the program. He deeply your long history of involvement with the MARS program and your perspective. That's not something that we would be able to have access to with any other person. So thank you for sharing that, you know, the, the long history and trajectory of your career with us and with the program and with the students. And Mr. Michael, um, I know that this program also takes a lot of time and you have been so supportive and so patient and so giving of your time as well. And we just are deeply appreciative of that and really want to recognize it. And Grassi, of course, the partnership with Lassen. Um, I think that we probably pointed out that this is the only program like it in existence. Um, it's a unique partnership between the National Park Service and NASA and a local high school that doesn't exist for with any other national park. Um, so this is a very special program and we're so grateful again that you guys have been so accommodating and, and hosting us out in the field and we get to use Lassen as a natural laboratory, which is an amazing component of the program. So thank you. Oh, and the last little thing I was telling Mike, um, in listening to your presentation, you did such a fabulous job, and it sounded like I was listening to a program on PBS. Like, it was good. Yeah, no, they uh, they really nailed their scripts. It was a, a very, um, I guess, very serious endeavor that they took on, um, not just preparing the, the slides, the presentation part of it, but then um, every word was crafted with, with care and so they just did a really good job with what they said and so um couldn't be happier with that and so they did a great job this year so thank you guys very much okay and i think with that um i think we're done for the evening and so um we'll end it right there thank you all for for joining us um another year um Every year it does get better, as Mike said. Um, we, we do definitely take feedback to heart and we try to make things a little bit smoother, a little bit more meaningful and impactful for the students. And um, that will continue to happen. And so um, next year we'll hopefully be doing a, 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 doing a little bit better job than we even did this year. And so that's kind of the goal. So thank you all for joining us tonight. And um, I will see you in school tomorrow and we'll be uh, back at it in the classroom. So. Thank you, and I'll end it right there.